So I'm a professor of English um, in the de uh, that's in the Department of English, and I also teach a lot of creative writing classes. And I've been teaching at the University of Virginia full time since 1995, and part time before that when my children were small, I taught part time from, from 93 to 95. But my connection with Virginia goes back a long way because I, s I came here as an undergraduate in 1974, when women were had recently been admitted. We'd only been here about three or four years. Um, and then I I met my the person who would become my husband in my third year, so that could happen to you. <laughs> Just get ready. And, um, and so after I graduated, I stayed in Charlottesville for two years, I had working for a law firm thinking that I might go to law school, uh, and applied to UVA Law School and got in. Um, but then uh, at the same time, the university was um, got some money to start a graduate program in creative writing, mm -hmm. and I got a phone call saying, we've got some money to give you and we'd love you to come and be part of this Master of Fine Arts and Creative Writing program. So I did that instead, and um, so it was sort of the road not taken, not, yeah. you know, law school, poetry, and that was from 80 to 82. And then in 1982, I left um, Charlottesville and taught at James Madison University for a while, and then at the University of North Texas. So I was gone for about 10 years and then came back. Okay. So it's good. It's, it feels like home mm -hmm. to me. Okay, so um, how can poetry help us learn about things in general? Not just learn poetry, but about things in the world or mm -hmm. just about yourself? Yeah, um, it's a good question. And um, because I think that a lot of people think that poetry is out to trick them, mm -hmm. you know, that it's difficult and it's complicated on purpose. Uh, I know my parents feel that way whenever they look at a poem that I've written. I think they think that I'm trying to leave them outside of some secret puzzle or something. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, poetry makes, the writer of poetry has to be very attentive to the world and she has to watch everything. Mm -hmm. And not only does she have to watch everything and pay attention to everything, but she also has to think to make connections between the things that are happening to her now and the things that happened to her mm -hmm. when she was a child or the things that might have happened to someone she knows and things that she imagines might happen in the future. So I think that even though people tend to think of poets as being crazy, you know, yeah. like running around in black clothing and drinking liquids brown liquids of various kinds, mm -hmm. um, we actually, it's a very sane activity to make a poem because it's an act of um, making sense out of life's sort of chaos. And in fact, Robert Frost says that a poem is a momentary stay against confusion. So life is so teeming mm -hmm. and complicated and poetry allows us to, to honor that complexity, but to do it in some, to give it a shape that we can take in. So I think that writing poetry helps us live, um, and poems help make people real to one another. Um, so do you think um, poetry can help us communicate with each other? Ideally, yeah, I think so. I mean, we've all read poems where we, um, you know, we feel outside of the poem. Mm -hmm. It seems very private, like almost like a diary or something that the poet meant to write to herself or to himself. But I think for the most part, the poet wants to communicate something. Mm -hmm. It might be something really private and interior that she wants to communicate, but she does want to communicate it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, I think that in that regard, you know, poetry does um, connect people and helps us uh, know about other how other people think and other people feel, which uh, Wordsworth said that poetry acquaints us with the noble living and the noble dead. You know, it's a way of knowing how people felt, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, as well as I can read a poem of my daughters and and see how she's feeling mm -hmm. or poems from my students. And so, yeah, I think it's an act, of, an act of communication, for sure. And learning how to write poetry, um, or trying to write poetry anyway, shows a couple things. One, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people think, oh, poetry, you know, it's like uh, the drawings that kids do in kindergarten, you know, anyone can do that. But no, I mean, it's it's not easy to make a poem. And um, making poems, and I don't know if you feel this way, but makes you think about every word that you're choosing. You know, yeah. and you can't, in a, in a longer piece, sometimes it's easy to let something slide, but in a poem, everything has to count. So the practice of making poetry makes you a better writer. Yes. You know, even if you don't decide not to become a poet, the way that you think when you write a poem, thinking about every word, the way the words sound, 
do the sentences have rhythm, are the verbs active, will make you a better writer, even if you're writing a, an NOR essay or an article for, you know, the Cavalier Daily, something mm -hmm. like that. So you think as an undergraduate, um, students should try to take a poetry class or maybe use poetry as a way of um, relieving stress or helping them learn maybe another class that they have? Mm -hmm. yeah, all those things would be great. I mean, certainly for English majors, I think I think all English majors should take a writing class. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we make all of our poetry students take literature classes because yeah. it's so important to read if you're writing. And um, But likewise, I think it's important for people who are critics and scholars um, to know to appreciate how hard it is to make a poem, to make a poem that that works on you know, at the levels of you know structure and story and image and music, all of those things at once. It's not as easy as it as it might seem. Mm -hmm. um, when you read a beautiful poem, you, it seems like it must have just fallen out of heaven, you know. But but no, you know, usually there's somebody working pretty hard at it. And then to answer your question about relieving stress, I mean, I think by all means, I mean. Um, poetry classes are designed to help people uh, learn the craft of poetry and to bring their work out into the public. Yeah. But I think everybody, even if they won't admit it, has written a poem mm -hmm. at one time or another. It, it may not be something they ever share, but you know, after heartbreak or they've lost someone to death or um, they feel particularly, or they're in love or something like that. I mean, people tend to write to, to write poems. And when I was directing the creative writing program for mm -hmm. eleven years, I would often, like once a week, get a phone call from somebody from town saying, uh, my grandmother died and we want to have a poem at the funeral. Can you recommend something? Mm -hmm. And I think it's poetry that people turn to when at those key moments. Yeah. When they're getting married, when there's a baby being christened, when somebody's died, um, when they're in love with someone. Because poetry, I think it was Coleridge who said, it's the best words in the best order. And it gives us... it'll. It gives us something intense that we can take in. You know, you can't really stand up at a wedding and read a long short story. Yeah, <laughs> it can't get, you know, there's too much to go going on. But you can read a poem and reach people that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, we had we actually read the Hell with Love. Mm -hmm. um, my teacher actually edited it and put a bunch of the poems together, and it came in stages. But we came across some poems that people were just like that's not a poem, that's mm -hmm. just words put together. What would you classify as a poem and mm -hmm. can anything that's just, anything be a poem or is there like a difference between something that's just short literature versus like something yeah. that's actual That's poem? a really good, really good question um, because I think people think that the opposite of poetry is prose, you know, so that, all, that prose has lines that go across the whole page and that poetry is just anything with broken lines. Mm -hmm. Um, and for some people, they have to be broken rhymes, lines that rhyme, you know, yeah. and, and I mean, everyone has a sense of what they think a poem should be, but I don't think the opposite of poetry is, is prose. I think that if you look at um, prose writers like James Joyce or William Faulkner, um, Richard Wright, you know, they're, they're, those po though, that prose is, reads like poetry mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, in terms of its rhythms and its cadences and stuff. Um, and some poetry doesn't feel like poetry to me. It feels like verse, you mm -hmm. know, like something in a card, a greeting card, that doesn't reveal anything to me. It's language that stays kind of on the surface and doesn't. Yeah. It's either abstract or cliche and doesn't open up a, a new world for me. So I would say, and also like when I'm driving home and I watch the guys on the track team, the cross country team, mm -hmm. running in the golden light, you know, I think, oh, that's poetry. You know, so they're. Poetry is something, it, you know, it's it, it, it's something that we can do it, we can use it to talk about music or a beautiful person or, um, you know, the sight of our own child or something like that, but a feeling of ecstasy. But uh, in language, I think a poem has to um, be musical, it has to um, create a, a believable physical world that I can enter and fall into, and it has to have something at stake, like a so what. Mm -hmm. It has to be, it has to reveal some kind of human truth or insight. Even, I don't mean it has to tie it up with a bow or answer, even provide an answer, but it has to give me, deepen my questions in a way. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I find passages of poetry in some of the fiction I read, like Virginia Woolf, for example, really rhythmic, beautiful, poetic prose. And sometimes when I'm reading certain poems, they feel more like stories to me. 
Mm -hmm. So I think the lines between the two are fluid, but again, the the language has to be interesting and and it has to be, I think, beautiful on some level, even if that it, what's being described is not beautiful. Um, maybe because I'm from New Jersey, um, mm -hmm. the you know that I'm I can find a kind of ecstasy, ecstatic beauty in urban landscapes and things yeah. like that. But there, but again, some kind of truth, some kind of beautiful, gorgeous attention to sound and image coming together in, in something that has a shape, you know. So you mentioned that you can use poetry to write about music. Do you think that some artists' um, lyrics can be considered poetry? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I really do. I, I think that uh, my children actually have shown me that. Of course, you know, I, I was raised on people like um, Joni Mitchell and, um, you know, Bob Dylan and people like that, and I, where we, we would sit around after school and listen to these guys, you know, mm -hmm. we would listen to them sing, David Bowie and people like that. And then w if we wanted to dance, it would be Motown or, um, you know, something else or the Rolling Stones, but to mm -hmm. listen to the, for the lyrics, it, there were certain, there were certain songwriters that paid attention to language that way. And so like right now, um, my daughter is really interested in Joanna Newsom. I don't know if you know her at all. She's kind of an indie harpist girl. and. When I first heard, when she first started playing her music for me, like five years ago, I just, it, I just couldn't get it. I, she has a kind of a high voice, and it's just, mm -hmm. um, but then she, my daughter printed out the lyrics for me, mm -hmm. and then I started listening to them with the lyrics, and and it's, they're very beautiful. They're really textured like poems, and very resonant, and so I mean I think that there can be a lot of crossover, and in my poetry program here, I've got students who write poem, who writes write songs. You know? mm -hmm. um, I don't think a song is necessarily a poem, but the lyric, you know, the lyric poem has its roots in song. Mm -hmm. um, earliest poems were chanted and sung and accompanied by instruments, so I mean, it makes sense. There should be a connection. Yeah. So what we're focuses, focusing on in the actual project is um, scholarship. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what do you think scholarship is, and is scholarship just um, writing and literature, or can mm -hmm. scholarship be something that you do? But what do you think about scholarship? Uh, well, that's a really good question, too, because um, on every faculty member at the University of Virginia has to submit an annual report to mm -hmm. the dean, um, and we have three sort of areas. Um, one of those areas is, um, let's see if I can remember them all, teaching, um, service, like you know, being on committees and things like that, and yeah. research, which is scholarship. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of um, people in the arts and sciences, that research would be things like the stuff that you do in your lab, or libraries to which you might go and and yeah. um, look at papers by um, writers that you're writing about or um, historians that you're interested in, primary documents and stuff. And I I often write about how what research is and scholarship is for poets can be all those things. Some poets are very interested in science, for example. Others do. I have gone to libraries and do a lot of reading to when I'm writing about a particular topic or a particular yeah. subject. But also my research is, you know, taking a walk at night and looking in other people's windows, lit windows, you know, and seeing what they're doing. And again, like we said earlier, paying attention to things, like listening in on people's conversations and trying to think of a new way to describe the sky. And, you know, just, yeah. um, so it's a lot of my research is just being alive and, and being attentive uh, while I'm alive. So it's a, it's a kind of interesting uh, area and it's hard for um people who are straight ahead academics to figure out that, oh, for a painter or for a musician or for a poet, research might mean something different than it does for mm -hmm. a straight ahead scholar. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question sort of? Yeah. Definitely. 